After three exciting months of traveling through Ecuador and experiencing the joys of this wonderful country, we're beginning to approach our goal. We're making inroads to that which mattered the most to us here, connecting with our cousins, communing with another section of the diaspora, the largest population of Afro-Ecuadorians exists in the largest populated city in Ecuador, Guayaquil. And this is where today's story begins. Buenos dias, boys and girls. It is uh, October 2nd, and that is National afro Equatorian Day, so we are going to celebrate. Uh, we're going to a side of town that everybody told us not to go to, so it uh, should be a lot of fun, and I'm very curious as to uh, what we'll find. We will be going today with an awesome community leader, someone plugs deeply into the community, really passionate about the community, is a part of the community, so we're excited to be able to see this part of Ecuador, to see this part of Guayaquil with her, and hopefully we'll be able to introduce you to her. Meet Lucy Gonzalez, much more than a community organizer, more of a queen mother who addresses the needs and plots the future of Afros in Ecuador. She's special, caring, benevolent, sincere, compassionate, and welcoming. She opened her home to us so that we could get a deeper, broader picture of what's going on in Ecuador with the Afros. It's the whole reason of the season, guys. This is the reason we came to this side. This is the story. This is what we're here to talk about, what we're here to see, what we're here to experience and understand. So let's ride. We are heading over to the black side of town, a place called Isla Trinitaria or Trinity Island. This is the south side of Waikil home of over half a million inhabitants, 90% of which are of African descent. This church was all black everything. And from the anchor to the stern, she was a beauty. This rally and church service was an absolute experience.
Never before have I seen a Catholic church so filled with reverent spiritual activity. As the syncopated rhythms of the African drums bang out and the voices of the congregation rose higher and higher, we witnessed something we'd never seen before. Right in the middle of our celebration of African culture, struggle, and unity was an offering made by our brothers in arms, the indigenous people. So there was an awesome ceremony celebrating this day. Then we had church. Everybody greeted their neighbors, we got the word, and then we headed out into the community of Nigeria. I wanted to introduce Doña Carmen, who is a very important part of the Afro community here in Trinitario. We're actually in an area that's called Nigeria, as uh, in, in Spanish, which means Ni uh, Nigeria in English. And this is one of the churches uh, that is dedicated to the Afro communities here. And uh, Doña Carmen is one of our community leaders. Okay? Doña Carmen, uh, te explico un poco qué es hoy y qué es la importancia de hoy. Bueno, la importancia de hoy, mi nombre es Carmen Araboli de Lazo, soy líder comunitaria, hace 28 años de este sector, lo amo, lo adoro, como ustedes no se imaginan. La importancia es que están enseñando a que nuestra cultura, nuestra religión no se pierda. Luego, pierden el valor, el valor de lo que somos, la esencia de nuestra cultura, que en esta comunidad, que la mayoría somos negros, porque dice afrodescendiente, pero yo no he venido de África, yo ni conozco de qué parte de África, porque hasta donde yo he leído, yo... Mi papá, mi mamá nunca me dijeron que ellos conocían África, pero la historia ¿no? y el llamarnos negros que nos hacen reconocer como que lo negro es malo. Pero yo ya crecí con esa mentalidad porque conozco un poquito de mi raíz. Porque si tú no te autoeducas, si tú no conoces tu historia, tiendes al fracaso y a ser humillado como hoy en el día lo están haciendo muchos oligarcas con nuestra gente. Ok, ok, you just said a, ok, Doña Carmen, espera un momento para que yo tarde. Espera un momento para que tarde. Ok. Uh, it's important for people to know that this community is in a space that was neglected. It was like a, a park area with a lot of flooding and stuff like that. Yeah. Where nobody wanted the the, and the, the area. The, exa here. Exactly. Yeah. And basically, a lot of the people, a lot of the houses that we'll see when we walk around the community, mm -hmm. they don't even have the deeds to these houses. These are That's just... That's what I was going to ask. Yes. And does the city do... Are, are there any city services over here? There are city services. Um, however, they're still working on making sure story. that everybody gets the deeds, everybody yeah. gets... Because these are lands that were... People that were pushed apart, you know? Um, I think it's what's... kind of squatter's rights. Kind yes. Of I think what's really important to note uh, right now is just that the, the community, the Afro community here, when slavery was freed, it's sort of similar to a lot of other countries. They were given nothing. Uh, basically, we have, uh, like the indigenous people fought to get some of their lands back Correct. that was taken from them. That's However, the, the Afro community never had the land. Correct. So they were looking for where they could settle. And this is one of the areas in which they are able to settle. Uh, Te gusta ser uh, negro? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Oh, okay. Um, Mira, you call it English, what is it? Aquí el aquí. 
Pues sí, todo. Oh, okay. Así. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Working hard. Sí, sí, sí. Oh, así, así, claro. Yeah, man. Hold on. What's your name, man? What's your name? Nombre. Steven Basilio. This home is a perfect example of the makeshift housing in this area. Before this, I wonder how they existed. So this is this is basically, as you can see, the houses are, are, are basically used from whatever material they can find. So if you just take a picture of the door for a second, you'll see that it's just whatever they can put together. And the, the, the bedroom in here. Yeah. Get on the road. So this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me. No me digas por mi voluntad chiquita. So what I try to do uh, is get different people that would like to volunteer, that would like to spend some time here, come into the community, see what the community is all about, and just help in different ways. It's not necessarily that we want people to give money, but just to come with different talents. We need people to help teach English, we need people to help teach computers, um, skills like... Oh, did you just get a plant? <laughs> Okay. okay. The that, the that she just bought. This you, you put in the front of your house and it helps to keep away the bad energy. And oh, okay. <laughs> I thought you were going to say mosquitoes. Okay. Mosquitoes are bad, Juju. Just FYI. Hey. Hey. Okay, what's really important for people to understand is that you can't just show up here. So if people are interested in, they could always contact me and then I could connect them, uh, connect them with how to do this. Uh -huh. But we're desperately in need of people to, who, who would like to volunteer and do different sort of services. Uh -huh. One of the community leaders here for quite a while. And then that one day she went blind. But people are saying that it was because somebody in the community like put a scrub on her. Yeah, it's like... So we had a wonderful time getting an understanding of the property, the people, and the community in Nigeria. Now we're going to a different area. <laughs> So we're just working our way around the different neighborhoods, uh, getting the Afrocentric feel of Ecuador. Yeah, we've had really great opportunities today to just see what's going on, to learn a bit more, to see the spirit of the area, so it's been cool. What you guys have learned, and, and it's, uh, I can't even explain it, man. It's just very interesting seeing the different things that tie into the different communities around the world. We are a people, and we take that culture everywhere, so it's just amazing right now. I ain't never seen Afro-Catholicism, but I did today. <laughs> Allow me to introduce you to Donya Aida, who can burn a kitchen down to the ground and make a gourmet meal from the ashes. This woman is a community builder. In fact, she is her community cornerstone. She's a mother of five and a grandmother of 21. This woman knows how to build a community based on love, appreciation, and discipline. Meet Don Freddy, one of the very few drivers who is actually approved to drive in the black neighborhoods of Waikil. This man is knowledgeable, respectful, down-to-earth, and just cool people. He's also a long-term resident of this particular neighborhood and he was a wealth of information regarding its history. The river supports life in this area and has for many, many generations. There's clamming, fishing, and it acts as a throughway to access other communities when you don't want to use the traditional highway. So the so about fifty years ago, this whole area was mainly just mangroves. 
and they came in, they, uh, people just invaded the space. And, the, and at first they just made their houses out of bamboo and they used uh, tents yep. for the roof because they didn't have money to, to make roofs. And so eventually the city tried to get them out, but they couldn't get them out because they had already, there was enough, uh, large enough. Why here? Que aquí? Está preguntando por qué aquí en esta zona. Porque eh, Guayaquil solo llegaba hasta el barrio Garay, parte, parte del centro. Sí. Y de aquí y de allí ciertos lugares estaban rellenos. Mm. Comenzaron la, la, las autoridades, las alcaldías, comenzaron a rellenar más, más, más. Entonces, esto, esto era, esto era eh, manglar, lodo. Y construyeron puentes y casas, entonces puentes a lo largo. Guasmo lo mismo, eran haciendas. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, so this is, this is basically muddy. Oh, mangrove, yeah. nothing. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Um, yeah, because Waikil got to a certain point, the population was growing. Of course, the Afro population that was here mm -hmm. needed a place to. Yeah. They didn't have a place. They didn't. I think that's the most important thing for people to realize that they just didn't have. No one gave them anything. So they interesting, because all you ever hear about is somewhere. Esmeraldas, Esmeraldas, Esmeraldas. Uh, if you want to see black people, go to Esmeraldas. You know. Um, no. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, it is said that Waikil has a population of three million people yep. all together. Yep. And a minimum of, uh, there's well, anywhere between 15 to 20 percent. Oh, you say 15 to 20? Wow, yeah, okay. Would be an Afro population. Uh, Afro descendants. Like See. people who are from. Um, a connection. Afro yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yes, it's true that Esmeraldas as a province has a larger percentage of black people in the, in the province. But I Having an interesting and wonderful time kind of exploring the black communities here. Everybody warned us not to come this way. Um, and I get it. I understand like with um, with the need comes the need to get whatever you need by any means necessary. I get that. Um, but it's just really nice connecting with uh, my people, our people. Really cool people. What you're looking at, what you're looking at is a stewed chicken in uh, coconut milk and some different herbs, looks like rosemary and some other stuff, and a basic white rice, blanco, and then you're about to watch us tear this the hell up, because it smells was special really good. And completely unexpected. We had no idea that Doña Ida would be preparing a meal by hand for us. So we were humbled, and we ate until our bellies were stuffed. The food was so good. Her children started falling through as we continued to eat dinner, and it eventually just turned into a family affair. Thank you, Donna. Uh, it, it, uh, it's the green. This is not plantains. These are bananas. Okay. <laughs> After dinner, Danya Ida decided to school us about this area, why she came to this area, and what she's doing over here. My name is Aida Quintero, Erazo. Llegué aquí a, aquí a Guayaquil, llegué a los 17 años. ¿Cuántos años tiene viviendo aquí? 56. 56. So, hablar un poco sobre su familia. Bueno, yo aquí vine embarazada de mi primer hijo. Aquí en mi, mi, me junté con, con mi esposo. De allí. Nos casamos, pero nos casamos después de algunos años como, como, como empleada doméstica. Ahí comencé trabajando y después me apasionó el proceso y me dediqué al proceso afro. Y después me dediqué a lo que es la líder comunitaria. Hice una... Hice una Un, un, unos talleres donde nos capacitaron para ese liderazgo y, y me ha gustado. Okay. Me siento orgullecida con mi familia porque hasta aquí no he tenido ningún problema con ninguno de ellos. Mis hijos todos, todos prácticamente son profesionales, todos trabajan. Y lo mismo los nietos van por ahí mismo, que tenemos, están estudiando, todos están estudiando los nietos. Somos una familia que funcionamos bien como familia. Buenas tardes, mi nombre es Solán Arroyo Quintero, soy guayaquileña, tengo 
49 años, tengo cinco hijos, gracias a Dios me siento orgullosa de mi país, porque con las altas y con las bajas que tiene el Ecuador de una u otra manera, es cuna de los demás, porque así como salimos, entran también. Entonces, de una manera u otra, como seres humanos, tenemos que seguir funcionando. No, es que igual a nivel del proceso afro, soy una también de las activ activistas que también me encanta mucho el desarrollo de las mujeres afrodescendientes, soy de las personas que también luchamos por muchos derechos dentro de la comunidad. And now, and now we have a boat coming in. Andan visitando. ¿Cómo así usted por acá? Muy bien. Bien. Bien, bien. Buenas tardes, buenas tardes. La murió papá Roncó. ¿Qué lo oí? ¿Usted qué toca? Yo me llamo Juan Eliezer Caicedo Arroyo. Yo soy nieto de la señora Aida Quintero. Eh, mi madre es Solange Arroyo y pues yo nací también aquí en, en Guayaquil, soy criado aquí en Guayaquil y todo, pues me siento orgulloso de mi país, tengo 27 años. Buenos días, mi nombre es Keila Arroyo Hurtado Ceciño, yo soy el nieto de la señora Aida Quintero Arazo. Actualmente tengo 17 años y estoy terminando mis estudios básicos en el Ecuador. Me siento muy orgulloso en este país porque este es un país que posee mucha variedad cultural y mucho respeto ante la cultura afrodescendiente que yo represento. Buenas tardes, mi nombre es Samir Semá Arroyo. Soy el nieto de la señora Aya Quinto Grazo, hijo de la señora Solange. Y me siento orgulloso de Ecuador porque Ecuador solamente no nos dan, sino que nosotros también damos. Por lo que Ecuador siembra y cosecha muchas cosas como cacao, frutos, ¿me entiendes? En la ciudad de Esmeralda, Costa y todo. Y a nivel internacional también me siento muy orgulloso por Ecuador por lo que está haciendo la, se la selección de Ecuador hoy en día. Gracias. Para nosotros es una familia bien mancomunada, en la que todos nos unimos. Cualquier cosa que le pase al uno estamos todos unidos, como un solo hombre luchando y dando consejos. Fue al que vean fuera de, de, nuestro, de la casa, pero ellos tienen su hogar, pero también participamos nosotros en todas las toda la actitudes de ellos. Y de ellos... Tanto mi persona como mi esposa nos sentimos orgullosos. Who has the best music in the house? Okay, so there's quien se tiene el mejor uh, gusto en cuestión de música. Sí. Are we looking at you? Quien es el DJ de la okay. familia. Oh, you're DJ. Okay. Ah, sí. Okay. Hasta hasta la abuela dice. Ah, sí. Hasta la abuela se junta. What's the DJ name? DJ nombre. You have a name? Do you have a DJ? Así de un nombre artística de DJ. Yo. Sí. No, okay, 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 okay. Um, ¿Qué artista le gusta? Okay. What type of music do you mix? ¿Qué tipo de música te gusta? Me gusta la música brasileña y la de la. Dembow, dembow, así. Dembow. Dembow. Familia Quintero. Muchas gracias. Gracias a usted. The moral of this story, to me, is character. If the parents have character and willfully instill that character in their children, the trickle-down effect is through the generations. This is generational wealth. Por medio de la organización, gracias a Dios tenemos organización y tenemos también una fundación. Entonces, si ustedes nos quieren ayudar para ayudar a las comunidades afro, porque donde nosotros tenemos el trabajo, tenemos la empresa, es en la Trinitaria. Ustedes tenían que venir para allá a conocer, para allá a darse cuenta cómo trabajamos allá, la pobreza que hay allá. Entonces, por medio de, por medio de las organizaciones y por medio de ser una líder comunitaria, trabajando con los procesos afro, a ver, hacemos los proyectos y con esos proyectos trabajamos con el gobierno. We asked Doña Aida to show us her secrets to an orderly household and raising productive children. And this is what she showed us. Ooh. Oh, that's a switch. So that's called a switch where I come from. That's what my grandmother would get. Yeah, she said that she's had this for years. Oh my gosh. It's probably got blood on it. <laughs> Jeez. Ooh. That's what happened if you being bad grades home. Want to bring drugs into the house? Wow. Yeah. It's like a, I, 
La tranquilidad del hogar pasó un señor vendiendo por ahí. La tranquilidad del hogar pasó un señor vendiendo por ahí. That's the key to a good family. <laughs> So this is the divide between oh. In all seriousness, it is not recommended to go south in this city without an escort. Preferably someone with a pass who is highly respected in the community. ¿Te gusta ser negro? ¿Negra? Sí. Yes? ¿Por qué? Porque es una simple y me gusta mi color. ¿Cuál es tu nombre? Jenny. Jennifer. Jennifer, Jenny. ¿vives aquí Jenny. mismo en la comunidad? Sí. Ok, so Jennifer lives here in the center. And, um, do you like to go around the community? Do you like to go around to other parts of uh, Dike Hill? Do you like go tra <laughs> ¿Qué le gusta estar uh, conociendo las otras partes de Dike Hill? Y otras sí. Partes? Sí. Okay, sí. What's your Pero, favorite part? ¿Cuál es su parte favorita de Decor o de, de Guayaquil. El malecón. De malecón. De malecón. Me gustaría también, bueno, que, es, que se explique un poco su traje y su baile y cuánto tiempo estás bailando con, con el grupo. So, I'm going to uh, explain a little bit about her dress and how long she's been dancing with the, with the group. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> que haga así. Ay, no. Un poquito, no me gusta. Sí, sí, un poquito nomás. <laughs> Try to get it going. Vamos. Vamos. Como que haga así. Bonito. Ah, okay. Y cuánto, okay, cuánto tiempo estás bailando con, con el grupo? Da tiempo. ¿Ah? Mucho tiempo, hace mucho, mucho tiempo. Mucho tiempo. Tres, cinco, ocho años. Como tres. Como tres años. So she's been dancing with the group for like three years. Unfortunately, one of the other things for people to know is that the Catholic Church was the largest owners of slaves yep. in this country. Yep. Uh -huh. yep. And one of the ways to get the people to come to church is by Listen, incorporating... That was the Spanish thing. That, that was it. by incorporating their... their that's what I think uh, Mama Negro is all about, in, indoctrinate black folk to come into the church. Exactly. Um, ¿Te gusta favorite música? What do you like to listen to? Yes. ¿Cuál es su música favorita? Mm -hmm. Bad Bunny. <laughs> Bad Bunny. No, it's not my oh, oh. No, no, what is your music favorite? No, what do you like? My music favorite is. The artist. Yeah. Carol G. Okay, 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 okay. And what other? Manuel. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you.